much. Okay. It looks like we are up and going. Hello, everybody. Um, I know the title card said that I was going to be giving the closing speech, and that is still true. Um, but <laughs> we have one more talk before that, and that is by Ruben Yap from Zcoin. If you don't know Zcoin, it's a coin that's not Monero, so I don't know why he's at the Monero Village, but he walked <laughs> in one day, we took him off the street, and we raised him as our own. So he's going to give a talk about uh, Zcoin and competition to Monero, so I hope everyone sticks around, because it's going to be some good stuff. Passing it over to you, Ruben. Take Thank it away. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Ruben. I am the project steward of Zcoin. And basically what that means is, you know, I'm the caretaker of the project. So first of all, it's uh, super early for me. It's 6 a.m. for me. And uh, yeah, so if I'm a bit slow, please forgive me. And today we are going to talk about... Uh, ditching opt-in privacy uh, to compete with Monero. And to be fair, I was put up to this topic. Uh, I had actually a less controversial topic to talk about. But here we go. All right. So, you know, what is exactly the, the privacy landscape right now? And, you know, it, it's pretty clear that Monero is, is the king not just in market cap, but I guess in like overall privacy uh, and, and the protection that it provides, you know, um, and it's a lonely throne, right? And we're going to take a look at why that is the case and why what we at Zcoin are trying to do. So, you know, this is like a little, little, um, what do you call this table that I built? Uh, it's uh, some may not or may not agree with me, but uh, as you can see, you know, Monero almost uh, scores really highly in in many of the stuff that kind of matters as a privacy coin. You know, uh, first of all, you have like the theoretical privacy level, which is you know maybe how good is your privacy technology, and although it's kind of long in the tooth, in my personal opinion, uh, Ring CT you know does offer a decent amount of privacy uh, just out of the box. But of course, uh, because, you know, everything is on by default, you know, with stealth addressing and, you know, very high compliance, there is very a high practical privacy level because er you're mixing with, you know, lots and lots of, of different inputs and outputs. Uh, it has the, the team, you know, you have the, the awesome people at the Monero Research Labs who are you know, uh, conducting independent research full time. Uh, it does have uh, recently just added, you know, network layer privacy through Dandelion, and it has very high liquidity. And this is actually also uh, important, I guess, liquidity and also transaction volume, right? Because uh, in privacy, um, you know, uh, anonymity likes a crowd. Uh, and obviously, the more people using your platform uh, and the more people trading it, you can transfer value through it and there are more transactions to kind of hide within. So that's also actually an important metric as well beyond just the tacticals. So, you know, this is the, like, you know, everyone talks about Monero and then, well, what about Zcash? Why do you say that Monero is kind of alone on the throne, right? And Zcash has really interesting technology. You know, they have the highest theoretical privacy level. It's like two to the power of 32 or something like that. Uh, you know, they have independent research. They're really good researchers. I don't think they have network layer privacy and they have, uh, you know, pretty decent liquidity in terms of exchanges and also an okay number of transactions uh, that's happening on chain. But the practical privacy level is actually really low because very, very few people use their shaded transactions. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Zcoin, you know, we use a kind of a different kind of a zero knowledge proof uh, to Zcash. Uh, I do feel that we offer a theoretically a high privacy level, especially as we transition to our new privacy protocol, which we will talk a bit later. But again, because we use opt-in privacy and we'll see how bad this is actually that has panned out, uh, the practical privacy level is really low. We do have our own independent research. We have network layer privacy through Dandelion. And okay, our liquidity is fair. Our transactions are decent. Of course, there are all these other competitors, especially in like Bain, Green, uh, you know, of course, whether you agree with me, it's a, 
it's a bit difficult to say whether they have independent research because they don't quite have cryptographers, but they are implementing some unique takes on a certain type of protocols. Uh, but, you know, I would say that, you know, basically the main guys are Monero and Zcash. Of course, they are like the Z to Z forks. I think the most famous one would be something like Pirate Chain, uh, which is using ZK Snarks well with like full mandatory privacy. And although they offer very high theoretical privacy level, their practical privacy level is only probably medium only, just because so few people are using them. There's so few places to to actually use them, exchange them, and everything that the crowd is very, very small. So the theoretical privacy is high, the liquidity is really low. And of course with Zcash and all that ZK snarks, you have all that issue with trusted setup. And I think the, the best way to kind of illustrate, uh, you know, the difference between theoretical privacy versus practical privacy is that, you know, the Zcash on paper has the best privacy technology, just if you just look at the anonymity set, um, because it's not mandatory. I, I don't know what's the exact percentage, but it's super low. And because of that, uh, timing attacks and people having to be very careful about how they properly use uh, shielded transactions or Z2C transactions for proper privacy becomes really tough. And there was actually this uh, fellow, I think just like uh, one, one month ago, yeah, uh, just one month ago, like a couple of weeks ago, he was like saying, ah, oh, you know, Z coins, uh, Z Z cash privacy is the best. And um, they're saying, you know, he offered a reward of $100. And he said, this is my TXID. He gave a TXID. Uh, so he did give some additional information. And he said, please trace which T address that I uh, came from. And this guy just uh, from Brian just posted this random T address uh, within a day. And if you know, he asked, how did he do it? And it was very simple. All he did wasn't any sort of rocket science. It's just, there was not some advanced guy like chain analysis or, or stuff like that. This was just some random Twitter dude just went on the Explorer and was looking for a, a transaction that was shielding it and just guess. And that's the problem because so few people are, are using it. And again, secondly, using it correctly. Uh, it was very easy to kind of uh, guess that this was the 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 T address that that actually made this uh, that shielded uh, shielded address payment. So yeah, uh, this is kind of like a really good illustration of how um, you know you put low usage of the privacy technology and also the way that the setup that makes it hard for newbies uh, to use privacy correctly. And I do think that, you know, like in my personal view, one of the things that Monero does right is that because it's privacy owned by default, it's all, there's only one way to do a transaction. So like newbies have a lot of that complexity, uh, you know, kind of abstracted out rather than having to go through several steps. And, you know, this is also a problem with Bitcoin. How do I use it? I go through Wasabi, I go through this, I go through that. Uh, you know, privacy should be simple so that, you know, uh, everyone can be protected. So the way, for those of you who don't know what Zcoin is, uh, our, the way our privacy works is kind of different uh, than, let's say, Monero. And I guess the basic idea is that you can destroy coins and then you can redeem them for brand new ones with no previous transaction history. So it's kind of like, you know, you have these coins with all this transaction history and then you destroy them. And at any time in the future, you, you kind of present a zero knowledge proof that you did indeed burn the coins. And that allows you to redeem brand new coins with no previous transaction history. And the beauty of the zero knowledge proof is that you don't have to show the exact kind of coins you burn. This is what preserves the privacy, right? Or the, rather like the, the source of the funds. And now with our Lelantis version two, you don't even need to redeem them for brand new coins. You can actually pass the right to redeem to, to someone else. So like, let's say I don't want to redeem and show that brand new coins, I can give this uh, like if I burn 10 coins, I can say I pass the right of redeem redemption of five coins to someone else. 
and they can redeem it at their pleasure or they can just pass that right to redeem to someone else again uh, and this is I guess almost like equivalent to a Z to Z transaction because it hides both amounts and source as well and the, the wonderful thing about our zero knowledge proof technology is that there's no trusted no trusted setup and it's using standard cryptographic assumptions um, this kind of setup is, I think, also quite using quite similar cryptography that is being uh, looked at by Monero Research Labs in Octarus and Triptych. Uh, but it's just that the way that we use it uh, with this burn and redeem mechanism is, is slightly different. And there's certain advantages to that. So, you know, you know, our argument is that this is a better privacy method because, you know, we are not kind of like just... We're not just kind of hiding in the crowd, and the, the way I always kind of explain it is kind of like farts in a lift or, or you know, sands on the beach, right? Where if I'm the only person in the lift and I fart, everyone knows that it's me. Uh, with Monero, you guys are a bit more sadistic. You drag 10 other people into the lift with you and you fart so that it's not clear who's fought, uh, you know, wh which among the 11 people farted. Uh, or with uh, the really sadistic people like Mimber Wimber is kind of like dragging everyone who wants who wants to fart, and we all fart at the same time, so it's not clear whose fart is who. And that's I guess similar with Coin Join as well. The way we see our technology is that I go into the lift, I let out a fart, and I make it disappear, and it's and then I can choose at any time in the future to make that fart appear. And we feel that this is a better privacy approach because now your plausible deniability is anyone who actually ever entered that lift rather than the people that you are in the lift uh, together. And, you know, this kind of privacy uh, mechanism, I feel, holds a lot of promise as well. So <clears throat> let's talk about, uh, you know, we've been around since 2016 and uh, we used something called ZeroCoin before, which is why we call it ZCoin. Uh, but we actually transitioned to a uh, zero coin did have a trusted setup, but Sigma does not have a trusted setup, and we transitioned to that at the end of 30th of July 2019. So it's almost been about uh, about a year a year plus, and it has been completely opt in privacy. So how has this gone? You know, this was actually kind of an experiment because previously, even with zero coin, the way to do the the privacy was kind of um, was kind of cumbersome, so not many people were using it. With Sigma, you really simplified the process. You just press the number amount that you want to anonymize, rather than selecting individual denominations, and just go bam, it's anonymized. So we actually wanted to see, uh, you know, whether this would encourage better use of the privacy protocol, but. Only 500,000 Zcoin has gone through Sigma since uh, the launch of Sigma in 30th of July 2019. And that's, like, I, don't know, I think, 4.6% 4, 4 of the, the entire circulating Zcoin uh, that has gone through the system, right? Now, if you take a look at the figures on the left, um, so what mint is like how many total has mint? and how many total has been redeemed, spent, uh, which is uh, what it is. And I guess I would say that if you just look at the denominations um, within themselves, uh, the anonymity set for like the set of 100 is anywhere between 217 to 4,269 per transaction that when you do that spend. So it's not bad. But you know, actually, the potential of this technology is also a lot ho uh, a lot higher, and so that means this is with such a low usage of sigma transactions, you can get this kind of, um, I guess, anonymity sets. Uh, obviously, it's still not ideal, you know, uh, but I guess it kind of diff kind of illustrates the difference between what we call like burn and redeem mechanisms and decoy systems where you're always constantly having to find people to mix with you because like like in the lift example you're constantly finding people to drag people into the lift with you uh, but because of we use the usage of fixed denominations we have to burn and redeem in the fixed denominations this is actual anonymity set may not be as large as people think of it because uh, there are certain patterns if people burn 
a 0 0.5, a 10, a 25, you know, and then next thing they redeem a 0 0.5, a 10, and 25. Your anonymity set is not just, it's not like 121 and a 25. It's actually the combination of those things. So that actual anonymity, anonymity set can be a lot lower than, than you know, so-called just based on the, on the statistics. Uh, so what are we doing to fix this, right? And this is where Lelantis kind of comes in. Lelantis is our new privacy protocol uh, set to go live uh, for the first version, uh, probably at the end of uh, the, I guess the beginning of, uh, beginning of October-ish. Uh, we're going to re probably release the binaries around then and then have it live uh, in a, one month or, or so or right after that. Now, the beauty of, of uh, Lelantis is that it can support pretty large anonymity sets. Uh, of course, probably not in the range of uh, Zcash, which is like 2 to the power of 32. But we're looking at sets of like 64,000, which, which isn't bad. And we probably can even bring it like one, uh, one order of magnitude higher uh, with some small improvements as well. Yes, no trusted setup. It uses a ZKP card, a one of many proofs, uh, which I think is also the basic for stripage. Uh, and we will be using this. Finally, we're going to be using it privacy on by default. That means all our official wallets will be using uh, like anonymizing funds by default so that users don't really have to care too much. And But there is still the option to opt out. And we'll probably talk out talk a bit about why we, we chose that mode uh, to, to, to transition into the privacy. Uh, the crypto library was just uh, completed this audit with a uh, trail of bits, uh, which was actually funded through uh, crowdfunding using the zero coin crowdfunding system, which was definitely uh, as a fork of uh, the Monero CCS. And the cryptographic paper is being audited by uh, Dmitry Kovratyovich. And as you can see, uh, you know, it is, of course, you know, some may argue that the Monero's anonymity set size isn't actually 11 because of the way things combine together. But let's just take it at face value. This is kind of, uh, you know, I think this is a good overview of, of what the technology does. All right. Now, um, okay, we have five more minutes. Uh, so just to kind of understand, like, how are we actually deploying Lelantis privacy, right? The phase one, as I said, that is happening uh, in October this year, uh, gives the ability to burn and redeem without uh, no fixed denominations, right? You can burn any arbitrary amount. You can redeem any arbitrary amount, even a, like a partial amount of what you burnt. Right. All official wallets will anonymize funds by default. Uh, there's no new address structure. We still use the same address structure. Uh, but of course, there's still the opt-out to use transparent. Uh, because you know, right now, I mean, realistically, you know, we are a smaller coin. Uh, and you know, exchanges, they're not going to reinvent everything for us. All the existing integrations that we want, uh, all the there are certain parts of infrastructure does rely on transparent addresses, uh, transparent funds. So we cannot uh, straight away opt out, especially without a new addressing system for Lelantis. And we also want to make sure that we have our mobile SDK so that you know mobile wallets can also do all these Lelantis transactions as well. Uh, we actually do have a, a, a privacy on by default mobile wallet maybe coming in the next few weeks for Sigma privacy, not Lelantis. And because uh, there's still no second address structure, there's the requirement to redeem all the time, uh, some timing attacks are still possible in phase one. Phase two is when it gets really interesting. And that is uh, coming, I would say, maybe sometime in 2021, but maybe the second quarter or first quarter, maybe, right? And it introduces introduces direct anonymous payments where, as I was saying, I don't have to redeem the coins. I can pass that right to redeem to someone else, even partially. Amounts and sources are all hidden, and I do think that the privacy offered is really, really high, especially uh, when you see how we implement anonymity sets. And we introduce a new... Uh, Lelantis addressing system. That means, it's, I guess, like if you have Zcash, it's almost like a shielded address system. And what we're going to do is that make that the default for all our official wallets. Now, we 
once we have this addressing system, I think then it's, start to, it's a good time to then actually start talking about mandatory privacy. That means there's no opt-out. Um, there are still some uh, things that we kind of need to figure out because we are being integrated into a DeFi. I know Monero guys hate the, the, the word DeFi because it's been bandied around a lot. But, you know, we, we, we see value in being integrated into like uh, like stuff like Uniswap uh, to be able to trustlessly do the, um, you know, decentralized exchanges or the use collateral for you want to make Zcoin, I guess, more useful, right? Uh, and certain other things like proving times, like for an individual user that's making like a transaction, uh, you know, personal transactions, a few transactions at a time, the proving times of like, yeah, one second, two seconds isn't so bad. But if you, let's say you're an exchange and you have to send like hundreds of transactions, uh, we sometimes, <laughs> that we, we don't know how exchanges would, would react to that. There are certain improvements in the pipeline that can actually reduce proving time by an order of magnitude. We actually have a paper out for that called hierarchical one of many proofs, uh, but it has to be adapted for Lalantis. And we're also looking for instancing solutions where you know I can use a ZKP to kind of uh, get the, the entire state of, of, of Z, uh, Zcoin and also the Lalantis. Uh, like an anonymity sets. So, you know, to improve usability, to encourage the use of Lalantis or else it'll be just too cumbersome and no one would want to use it. So this is our current plan and hopefully, you know, we can finally move to privacy on by default, but, um, you know, there are still some open stuff, but we do want to move to privacy on by default with opt-out definitely for sure uh, at the end of this year, I mean, October-ish. And then we slowly start pushing to mandatory privacy. And we feel that's really going to be important. Now, the last thing I want to talk is about anonymity sets because I will, you know, people are saying like, well, you know, how, what, what do you mean by you only have an anonymity set of 64,000, right? So kind of think about uh, past 64,000 uh, because of the limitations of the technology of Lelantis right now. Uh, stuff start to take uh, increasingly longer and longer. Um, so that means both proving time and verification time start getting quite quite a bit more. So we, we kind of decided to say to cap that set of 64,000 so it does not grow so that this uh, the performance would still be acceptable. Now let's assume that with privacy on by default, with transparency, or uh, we have a very, very low estimate of 30% of transactions that are anonymized with current transaction volume. And that would mean to hit that set of 64K would take about, you know, slightly less about like two thirds of a year. Uh, and that's assuming about 800 transactions per day. Obviously, if the, the usage of Zcoin picks up, we're going to see this field a lot faster. And I guess one of the interesting things is that um, what happens when the set of 64,000 is filled? Am I going to start from zero again? That's obviously a really bad uh, thing because that means for that period of time, guys start a new set, the people using that new set gets very, very little anonymity, right? So we do something, what we call a sliding window approach, which is quite clever, where uh, we actually kind of start new anonymity sets with kind of preceded with at least 16,000 uh, commitments that have came from the previous set. And because of the nature of zero knowledge proofs where you, even though that, you know, you prove that you burnt the coins, no one really knows how much of it actually has been redeemed or rather which one has been redeemed. So you can always take those uh, commitments and place it in a new one because no one has knows, okay, from this 16,000 that I've preceding, how many of them has been used? Uh, there's no idea for that. So what that means is that once the first set has been seeded, or even with the first 16K, the minimum anonymity set for Lelantis never falls below 16,000. So it's 16,000 to 64,000. So we think that's really good and kind of illustrates uh, one of the benefits of, of doing this burn and redeem method rather than compared to Monero, which are just building really, really large rings. I think with Triptych, it's like uh, rings of like a hundred or so.
uh, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, uh, this kind of like um, ends my brief uh, introduction of kind of illustrating why we think that uh, our moving into uh, privacy on by default combined with the Lantus technology uh, would really give, you know, you know, rather than like kind of like just saying that we're a privacy coin, right? Like Zcash, you know, they have all this amazing technology that no one is using. And you're like, why? You know, how can you call yourself a privacy coin if no one's using your privacy, right? And it's not as if Monero's technology is the best. It, it isn't, you know, even, even I, I don't know if everyone would agree with that. It's just more about the overall package and because everyone is using the transactions that makes it as an overall package the best. But if let's say Zcoin moves towards uh, privacy on by default and we get significant traction with our privacy protocols, we make it very difficult for a user to mess up and to review their privacy. I do think that, you know, I do feel that the Lantus and together, uh, both practical and theoretical kind of uh, come together and really can pose a challenge to Monero. And uh, I, I, I hope to see that because I, I do think that this space uh, really needs better privacy protocols because, you know, Mimba Wimba doesn't cut it. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm not sure how to go about how end this sharing of the screen. And does anyone have any questions?